Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2016. In this section I'm going to introduce you to one or two basic ways of importing data into an Access database. Now before we start I should point out that so far and in fact for most of this course when we talk about an Access database we really mean a single file, an ActDB file and within the ActDB file there are many things. Amongst the things within an ActDB file, there will be a number of tables. Now we've already created one or two tables, and of course in a database that supports particularly some kind of business activity, there will probably be many tables. Now it's not the case that the tables holding the data will always be in the database, in our case the ActDB file that you're working on sometimes the tables may be external to your database. Let me give you an example. I mentioned that just a little earlier on that when it comes to dealing with people booking vacations with Esprit de Tour and paying for vacations they probably book and pay for them using their local currency. So there will be a table somewhere where we look up a currency conversion rate. Now that is not a table that we would necessarily maintain in our own database. We may use a table in another database somewhere else or we may use a service linked to a currency exchange database. And it will quite often be the case that a database application will get its data from a number of tables in a number of different places. Now when we get data in that way when we basically access data from somewhere else we use the general term linking and one of the things that you can do in access is to link to tables in other databases now I'm not going to cover linking in this course if you go to the external data tab you'll see that there are two groups on that tab there is an import and link group and there's an export group. Now export we're going to look at later. Import and link, well I've just said we're not going to cover link. What we're going to look at in this section is import. Now what happens when we import data is that we will get data from somewhere else but we will import it into one or more tables in our own access database. Now there are various places that you can import data from. For instance, you can import data from an Excel workbook. You can import data from another Access database. You can import data from a selection of ODBC, that's Open Database Connectivity Databases. That means other types of database, not necessarily access databases, but which conform to a standard that is called ODBC. And in fact there are many other places. You can get data from XML files, you can get data from SharePoint, from data services. This would include something like a currency exchange service. So there are many other places you can get data from to import into access. But what I'm going to cover on this section by way of an introduction to importing data is importing data from a text file. And this is a very common way of importing data into a database. Having said that, for those of you who are familiar with Microsoft Excel and for those of you who have a copy of Microsoft Excel, I'm also going to partly demonstrate importing from Excel. So if you have and use Excel then you might like to try this particular option because text files and Excel are two of the most common ways of getting data into an Access database. So let's start with importing some trips into the Esprit de Tour database. What I've got here is an Excel workbook if you don't use Excel or you don't understand Excel workbooks there's absolutely no need to worry because this is really only for the people that use Excel you'll still be able to follow what I do as I import data into the Esprit de Tour database and you'll still be able to do the exercise in the next section 
Now I've got about a dozen trips here and they're the first ones that the company is going to offer and each column in the workbook corresponds to a field in the trip table that we created and the column headings tell you which field they correspond to so we've got code trip name activity level country you've seen all those before of course now for each of the trips there is one row in the Excel workbook so the first trip GCA Grand Canyon Family Rafting Adventure activity level moderate country USA there's then a description the duration in days a minimum price in US dollars maximum price in US dollars and there are about a dozen of these now what I'm going to do is to show you how you would start importing this data in Excel. If you don't use Excel, as I say, don't worry, we'll be moving on to the way that we're actually going to do it very shortly. So let me close the workbook. Now I'm in the Esprit de Tour database. I'm going to go to the External Data tab and I'm going to click on Excel. Get external data from an Excel spreadsheet. Now the first thing we do is to locate the spreadsheet. Well, this particular spreadsheet I've put in the Course Files folder. So if you do want to try this yourself as an Excel import, you'll find it in that folder. And that's what it's called, Esprit de Tour Trip Import .xlsx. So I open that, which is fine. And then I have three options. First of all, I could import the source data into a new table in the current database. So I could import that data and put it in a brand new table. I'm not going to do that on this occasion. I could append a copy of the records to the existing table and then I choose my table. Now of course in the Esprit de Tour database we only have one table at the moment, it's the trip table. And in fact appending those records to that table is exactly what I'm going to do. The third option is to link to the data source by creating a link table. What I could do is not to import the data into Access at all, to leave it in that Excel workbook and to link to it in the Excel workbook. And the way that I do that is I choose that third option and what Access basically does is to set up, it's a sort of dummy table in a way, it's almost like a window into that workbook so that you can access the data as though the data were in a table in this access database but the data is actually held in an Excel workbook. Now once you've made the choices we've got there, so you've chosen the Excel workbook, you've clicked on append a copy of the records to the table and the table, you then click on OK and you go through a sequence of steps to make sure that you're getting the right information. Let's just start this off without actually doing it. So I click on OK and as you can see it's already worked out how to slice the data up. Let's just scroll along there. Let's go to the end and make sure it's got prices and durations. Okay, It looks fine actually. So we then click on Next and away we go doing the import. Now on this occasion I'm not going to do that so I'm going to cancel but by all means try it yourself and we're going to do the import from a text file. The text file in question is also in the course files folder it's called Esprit de Tour Trip Import .txt, and I have it open here in notepad. Apart from giving those of you who use Excel the opportunity to import this data from Excel Looking at the data in Excel, it's a lot easier to see the structure of the data than it is in this text file. The text file is in a format that's called Tab Delimited and it's got a number of rows. The first row contains the field names. These are the field names that match the field names in our trip table. And then each subsequent row in this file is one of the trips. Now each of the fields in a trip is separated from the next by a tab character and that's why it's called tab delimited. And when Access reads a file like this it recognizes where each field starts by the tab characters. Now you don't have to use a tab character as a separator and various other separators are available. One of the most common separators to use is a comma. 
and we refer in that case to a comma separated file or a comma separated values file, a CSV file. Now I can't really use commas here because the data itself contains commas. Look at the third row there, ITI, the description of the trip. Immerse yourself in Italy's iconic cities of Venice, comma, Florence, comma, etc. If I try to separate the fields here with commas, Access will get terribly confused because it would think that Venice was the end of one field and Florence was a different field altogether and it would just get totally confused. So in this case, because none of the actual data contains tab characters, I'm using tab separators. So this is a tab delimited file. Now if you decided that you wanted to use a different separator such as commas and there are many other separators that you can use you can to some extent overcome the problems that I've just talked about by enclosing text in double quotes so for instance you could take the whole of that description immerse yourself in Italy's iconic cities onwards the whole of that field and put it in double quotes and access would recognize that it was all one field so that would be one way of getting around the problem I've just described but on this occasion using tab delimiters should be fine so let's close that and let's import the contents of this file into the Esprit de Tour database. I should point out that in the Course Files folder I'm importing this into version 2 of the Esprit de Tour database. The start of this is just like the Excel version so we go up to External Data. On this occasion we choose Text File and that starts the Get External Data Text File Wizard. We browse to that text file in the Course Files folder. We're going to use the second option, Append a copy of the records to the table Tubal Trip. Click on OK. We now have a choice. We can either say it's a delimited file, which of course it is. You can actually present the data in the form of fixed width file. So we could have a fixed number of characters for the code, a fixed number for the trip name and so on. But on this occasion we've chosen delimited, so we go with delimited. Click on next. One thing I need to make clear to access is that the first row actually contains the field names. The first row is not one of the trips. So there's a checkbox here, first row contains field names. I check that. Now Access will know what the field names are, which data corresponds to which field name. A note that Access has already taken a look at this file and has suggested that tab is the delimiter, which of course is correct. Now at this point, it's a good idea to scroll through and just check that it seems to have sorted everything out okay. Well, certainly all of those numbers at the end look right to me and the descriptions look fine, so let's click on Next. There's a checkbox there. I would like a wizard to analyze my table after importing the data. If I was importing this into either a new table, which is one of the options at the beginning, or to a table where I hadn't really set it up properly yet, the wizard would actually look at the data after importing it and suggest settings for the fields. Now we've already spent quite a bit of time in defining the properties of the fields in this table so we're not going to check that box, we're going to click on finish. And Access 2016 thinks that it has successfully imported the data. If I was going to get a lot more data in this form that I might want to add to that table I could check this box here and save the import steps and one of the options at the left hand end of the external data tab is to use a saved import so to save me making all these same selections again I could select a saved import and basically it will perform the same operation on a different text file for me subsequently I'm not going to save these import steps I'm just going to click on close and let's open up the trip table and see what we've got. Well, a first look at that suggests to me that that's pretty good actually. Now, of course, you can't see the whole of the descriptions because they're too long to show in the available space. But that doesn't mean to say that the data's not there. Let me just drag that over to the right. That's all there. We'll talk about other ways of looking at the data later on. But apart from the first record, which is, of course, our sort of dummy one that we tested things out on, everything else looks fine. 
it's now time to set you exercise 2 and I'm going to start by looking at my answer to exercise 1 in exercise 1 you should have created the night movies database and you should finish up with a single table movie tuple movie in my case and five fields in it there's an auto numbered ID field and then four other fields which I've called title direct tours with an S at the end year of release and runtime minutes now you are not going to need to use the same field names as me but you will need to make sure that any data that I provide for you such as in this exercise is either modified to fit your own field names or you'll need to modify your field names to fit mine now the subject of field names in fact names in general is one to warn you about right now and that is that in access there are a number of reserved words I'm going to show you that list in just a moment but you need to be aware of those reserved words they're words that access uses for things and if you use them for field names for example or various other names within Access 2016 they might appear to work but they're quite likely to cause you a problem so you should avoid these words let's take a look at them in the help so I'm doing a search there on reserved words and the topic there explains Access reserved words and symbols and then gives a list quite a long list some of the words are a bit obscure you might well not use those anyway but some of them are probably a little bit dangerous so for instance you have a reserved word from you might be quite tempted to use the word from say for a field name or group perhaps well I would avoid all of these words so that's reserved words so given the names that I've used and the field properties for each of the fields and so on and this is version 1 I've then created version 2 of the night movies database my answer to this exercise is in version 2 let's now look at the exercise itself I provided you with two files and you can use either one of the two files and each of the files contains details of 50 well-known movies now the details included are the ones that I've asked you to include in your movie table so we have title directors year of release runtime minutes and we're currently looking at the Excel file so if you're an Excel user you can use this one if you want to note those headings on those four columns they agree exactly with the field names that I've used in my night movies database and yours needs to agree as well now strictly speaking there is an advanced facility in the import that we've been through already I didn't look at the advanced facility but in the advanced facility you can map different names to different names but I'm not going into that now for the moment you just need to make sure that the names at the top of these four columns in Excel match the names of your four fields if they don't then your choice is either change the names of the headings in Excel here or change the name of the fields in your movie table in your night movies database so that's the Excel option the alternative I provided you with and this is for the non Excel users is a tab delimited text file it has exactly the same data in it and again the very first row here contains my four field names so if these four names don't agree with the names that you've used you've got the same choice you can either change the names in this text file or you can change the field names in your movie table but in either case you need to do an import into your movie table and here is my answer version 2 of the movie database now I should point out that before I did this I didn't delete the test movie so I've actually got the Shawshank Redemption twice although note the different IDs for the two versions and I'm going to get rid of that first one in a later section 
but if you have a duplicate or whether you've deleted the first one don't really mind you're going to delete that extra one later but you should finish up ultimately with 50 movies now we're going to record quite a bit more information about these movies as we work through the course but this is a good starting point good luck with exercise 2 I'll see you in the next section Hi, I'm Molly. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see similar videos, click the subscribe button on the right and check out our other Office 2016 tutorials below. I'll see you next week with new tutorials.